as an entrepreneur, I've always found the recruitment part of the business one of the most challenging because I know that I need to spend more time on it. I know that it's mission critical, but it's also not necessarily directly revenue related. And it's not a skill set that I've been trained in. There is a solution, and we're going to talk to a gentleman today who's actually got an amazing business out of Surfside, California, and it's called Discovered. Fletcher Wimbush has got the platform that people like you and I need for finding and retaining and tracking talent. Fletcher, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jim. Well, it's my pleasure because we know that a business is as good as the people, even if they're temporary or they're freelancers. If we're building teams, we must have the right players. Fletcher, tell us about Discovered, which is your AI performance hiring software, what it means to entrepreneurs what difference can you help us to make in our business? Yeah, as you, as you mentioned, I mean, I think it's a forever problem. Um, you know, there's two big challenges in hiring. One is just finding people. And I think in the last five to seven years or so, you know, uh, everybody understands how tight the labor markets are and the roller coaster of COVID and whatnot. Um, so having the right tools to market your jobs and to to be to be found and to be in the right places um, is really step one. Um, how to be your own headhunter and, and nurture a talent base is a tool or is a skill set that you probably want to work on developing at some point in your entrepreneurial journey. Um, There's several other techniques that you, you want to master and having the right tools to make doing that easier because as you mentioned, it's not your primary job responsibility. It's not the thing that you focus your time and energy on every day. Um, you know, want to make that as easy as possible, right? So that you can be successful at building a pool of relevant high potential individuals. Right. Um, and Fletcher, and tell then, us how, yeah, sorry, yeah, to, sorry to yeah, cut yeah. you off there, but how do you operate differently to, for example, um, the job boards, because there yeah. are loads and loads of uh, job boards. And then there's platforms like Glassdoor mm-hmm. that helps the employee evaluate yeah. the employer. But how do you offer something different yeah. to the to the entrepreneur? Yeah, diversity, right? Um, so if you rely on one source, you're limiting your opportunity to, to find and select that, you know, to identify that best person. Uh, we're a platinum partner with Indeed. Uh, there's only 10 out of 300 uh, applicant tracking systems out there in the world that are at that level, um, as well as partners with tools like ZipRecruiter, LinkedIn, Monster, and many, many others. Um, so again, that uh, really helps you expand your reach. You're not just reliant on one job board. Um, most of those, almost all of those job boards we are you know, publish openings for free, no cost to the employer. And um, you can throw extra marketing dollars and things behind it. But then also things like uh, employee referral programs and making those easy. Um, and the key behind those is just talking it up and, and going social media posting, mining your existing database of candidates. Uh, so if you've been in business for a little while, you've built a pool of people. And if you're sitting on one platform, it can be very difficult to mine those people back out of your database and re-engage them, um, you know, creating talent benches. So the platform helps people do all of those things, right? Uh, oh, as well so, as sourcing talent, right? So we've got here, uh, meet your hiring hero. You've got a picture on your yeah. website of a video with a bot. So Am I right in understanding, Fletcher, that what you're doing with Discovered ATS is you're really helping an entrepreneur by creating an assistant, a digital assistant, yeah. to go out and find on these job boards appropriate candidates and bring them back through one centralized recruitment so, system? Something like that, yeah. You make one post, it's going to distribute your job across all these different channels, job boards, social, internally. Candidates come in. Bot's going to help you identify which of those people are highly likely to be a fit for you. And then um, it's going to help you do things like write ads and messages and nurture sequences, text messages, and then assessing those people to make sure that they're good. So it's going to assist 
people at every stage of the hiring process. That's amazing. I can see that you've got automated candidate engagement and follow-up. And often it's that first tranche yeah. when you put out an advert and you get hundreds maybe of applicants of which yeah. 60, 70% are completely irrelevant, irrelevant. right? And yeah. you need to get down to the top three to five um, that you actually want to interview. So what I'm understanding is that with Discovered ATS, that kind of manual process is now taken care of in an intelligent way yeah. by the system. Is, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Candidates come in and we score them right away. And so you can go and look at the 100 candidates that you got, you know, last few days. And, you know, they're already ranked for you and it gives you a good starting point to say, okay, who do I, what do I want to do next? And then, you know, you may want to have these people complete some assessments or skill-based testing or provide references. And uh, it also this will reach out to the candidate and ask them to do or complete those tasks and then you know, report back how they did. Um, maybe you want to ask them to complete a one way video interview, uh, whatever it is that you want them to do and to, to get them through some of that initial screening. Um, you know, when when we do offshore hiring, the whole process is literally completely automated all the way to the final interview. Uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, that's amazing, Fletcher. And by the way, Fletcher is going to offer some access to his platform for those of us listening today that are interested in using the Discovered ATS platform yeah. so you get a trial. So do stick around because Fletcher is going to give you some places to go where you can get some free access. And he's also got a large number of tools and assessments on his website that he's going to give you access to. Yeah, Fletcher, I can really, really understand how you're really giving us a virtual HR manager, yeah, aren't you? That's working for us. Recruiting manager, but yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah, yeah, I called it. I, yeah, it, it, you know, we, I get put in the HR bucket, but I'm I'm not an HR person actually. I'm a you know I'm a, I'm a entrepreneur. I'm a business leader. I'm a I've been a leader in businesses my whole life uh, in every role that I've had, from captain of the football team to you know running a business, but. Um, you know, it's uh, talent acquisition or recruiter is probably, you know, <laughs> I think a little okay. bit better. But um, and I think that's an important thing for people, small businesses to understand that hiring is not an HR function. It's it's completely different mindset. You know, you don't hire an HR person to win at hiring. You hire a talent acquisition expert to win at hiring. Oh, that's it. I, I hadn't understood that differentiation before. Fletcher, what's the difference then? Help me to understand why are those two things different? Yeah. Primarily, HR is focused on compliance and uh, what you do with the people once you have them on the team. So oftentimes they're doing things like payroll or benefits or uh, putting on parties or doing other administrative tasks of managing the team. And oftentimes they're tasked with doing recruiting, but you have to keep in mind most HR professionals are not trained as talent acquisition or recruiting experts. They're trained in legal compliance administrators to you know, make sure that the human resources are dealt with compliantly, and it, recruiting is not that. It's very, very interesting. I suppose as an entrepreneur, without that level of sophistication, uh, you know, I used to just think of it as going out and finding people and hoping to attract people. But um, it's yeah. really, really valuable to get that distinction. As you say, you've got almost a sales function, haven't you, to go out and find the good talent. And then you've got the administration, the hunters and the farmers, I suppose, yeah. Uh, yeah. would be maybe a way of looking at it. But yeah. you have mentioned you're an entrepreneur, Fletcher. You know, on this show, I try and find people who've got goods and services or products and services that are useful. But I also like to find out about you and how you build that business. So yeah. tell us with Discovered ATS, as an entrepreneur, how are you building this brand? How are you getting people to come and be your clients and partners. Yeah. Well, I think one thing, you know, I think is important for me to note is everything we've done has been bootstrapped. So we've taken no external money or partners, or, uh, and I am a solo entrepreneur, so I, I have no business partners. Um, and that's its own unique path, I feel, this in this day and age. But, um, you know, uh, I, I found, you know, in a, through our previous business units or channels here that, you know, there's been a handful of things have been very successful for us. Number one, SEO has been 
inbound content based or organic search marketing uh, has always been our number one generator of, of leads and customers ultimately. Um, and uh, that that's been number one. Number two is, is uh, doing things like this. So being on podcasts, standing on stages, speaking to small groups and doing workshops and, uh, yeah, one of our core values is educate first. So that fits the content marketing and the SEO side. It fits, you know, getting on stage, being on podcasts. Um, so those have been very successful. Cold email um, has been very successful in our uh, executive search business. Um, and um, yeah, I think those are those are the big ones. I feel like I'm missing those are the one. big ones. But yeah. I will pick you up because um, Fletcher, you have also on your on your website um, a lot of certifications, and you've got Captera, you've got Trustpilot, you've got yeah. uh, Itap, you've got one I can't read. We've got yeah. um, S H R M A T S. Yeah, sure. yeah. Do you want to just tell us about that? Um, if you like, so that it's social corporate proof strategy yeah. that you've got. Yeah. Um, I you know, I lean, I've leaned into that idea over the years for a long time. And, uh, you know, we do a really wonderful job. We, we transform our clients' businesses, right? Uh, we were talking in the pregame, you know, nothing is more satisfying than coming back to our clients a year later, which we do to all our clients. We check back in and say, Hey, how's it going? How did that hire go? Or how are those hire? how's hiring going for you for higher volume, uh, clients, right. And to hear them, I mean, I had a concrete company the other day uh, tell me, you know, they went from couldn't get their trucks out of the yard because they couldn't find drivers to buying more trucks. Mm. And that's a, you know, $5 million a year impact on their business. And right. Fletcher, that's, that's, yeah, that's uh, incredible. As you say, if labor uh, finding people is the bottleneck in the growth of the business, then if you like, it sounds like it's almost a, a meta engine that you've built there that helps people to manage all of that is very powerful indeed. You've, yeah. You do have a number here on your website that clients have collectively enhanced their bottom line revenue by over $643 million. Yeah. How do you get that number? Because, you know, on the whole, clients are very reticent to share <laughs> their successes. So I'm impressed that yeah. you've got a, a number as well. Well, I uh, learned this from a content guy, and I learned this from Gallup. Uh, he's probably familiar with Gallup, right? Um, they published an article, I don't know, 2019, right before the pandemic, that there's uh, that uh, turnover is a $2 trillion a year problem for U.S. businesses, right? And they didn't go out and survey every U.S. business to figure this out, but they used some great deductive reasoning and... Uh, uh, you know, looked at the publicly available database, but the 20% of, of uh, there's an average turnover of 20%. The average pay is about $50,000 a year. That cost of turning that person over, they use an estimate of, I think, like one and a half you know, times that salary. Um, and we did something kind of similar to that. We looked at, hey, you know, we're helping our clients uh, collectively last year, make a thousand hires, roughly it was 963 hires or something like that. Right. <clears throat> and, um, so we could, we could do the math pretty quickly and going back through our records there and saying, Hey, you know, if these folks are you know making these hires and they're able to retain these folks and, you know, through these testimonials and surveying our clients, and, you know, we know that they have very, very high success rates with the people they hire using our tools and our methodology that that has, uh, you know, an impact on their business. That's, you know, uh, when we did the math came out to yeah. 643,000 million, excuse me, and probably a bunch of other numbers, we just rounded it, you know, but you know, it's a pretty good approximation of the impact we've been able to make, right? Yeah, that's it. It's impressive. But also, I do like the way that you're trying to quantify yeah. the impact that you're making, because potential clients will be seeing that and want, obviously, to be part of to be part of that as well. Fletcher, you, you do have another business, and I know that your heart is currently in this new business, in this yeah. AI-driven business. Do you want to just talk to us a little bit about the strategy when you've got, if you like, uh, you know, an established company, which is you've got, you've had a recruitment and a search business. Um, you've got those established ones and you've launched a new one with a new brand. Yeah. Many, many entrepreneurs 
me included, have suffered with kind of losing much wind in the first business as we try and fill the sails in the new business. Yeah. How have you managed to build a second and a third brand without impacting the revenue on the earlier ones? Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, it is a real challenge, Jim, I mean, frankly, right? Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it came from very early on, or early on within a few years of the business. Um, you know, we were doing search work, had this executive search, retained search business, and then we had this assessment business. And, and at first they were all together and intermingled and the employees and the people on my team, you know, we sort of just did everything, right? And, um, <clears throat> which is true. And it's always, you know, we're always wearing lots of hats, but we got to a point where we realized they were very distinct businesses and made that separation. Uh, we got clearer about who our target audience was and we separated the teams. And so there's a team of people who focus on the search business and the things that make that business move forward and the things that make the assessment business move forward. And immediately the first year doubled revenue, right? As soon as we made that switch, if just a focus switch, right? Um, and in terms of, that, you know, sticking true to that, you know, we've, in order to do this, you know, it's been very, uh, very much a, having to create a new team around the, the new brand and the new focus. Um, so the, the new brand though, is ultimately a parent to the others. And that is a, it's a, as we talked about, it's kind of, for me as a, the culmination of my journey in, in helping people solve the hiring problem. And so it, it is a, some way it's a reunification. <laughs> Of, yeah, of them. but it's interesting that you found by separating the company into multiple brands that actually each one of them has become more efficient and more effective because of the impact of focus. Yeah. Whereas before, it was sort of a uh, sort of an amalgam of business models yeah. under one brand. So yeah. you really have got mitosis there, haven't you? You know, uh, where you yeah. managed to create you know two cells properly from one. Um, yep. Fletcher, so it sounds like a bit of a textbook case um, that you've managed to build an, a, the business and separate and grow businesses. As an entrepreneur um, based over in Surfside, uh, California, mm -hmm. it sounds beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any any things oh. that haven't gone quite your way? Uh, any marketing mistakes that you've made that you could share? Yeah, we've been we've been toiling on this one, um, you know, pregame, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I think, you know, it, it has been the shiny object, you know, chasing of, of ideas, you know, I think, you know, I've struggled with paid ads mightily, you know, it's been a big one for me. Um, I've, you know, I've struggled with the lack of focus. You know, the best thing that happened is focus, but lack of focus has also been, you know, a, a challenge there. Um, you know, agencies has been uh, always a failure for me. Um, so, in, in what way? You mean using? You mean using yeah. agencies? Yeah, yeah using external agency. parties. I've, Why is that? Yeah, I've never successfully hired a marketing. I've turned probably seven of them over the eleven years uh, that I. Is I've, that right? Yeah. And what, what, what do you think has been the recurring <laughs> issue there? Because it's interesting how many entrepreneurs I meet who do fail with yeah. agencies. And, you know, when people get to 14, 15 people, they hire an agency before hiring a marketing manager. Yeah. You know, it is, is, tends to be the, the rubric. Yeah. Uh, and then they find it doesn't work. So I'm interested to hear what's been your yeah. experience and what we might learn from that. Well, I think. I mean, what I, I liked, I mean, I think what we do is pretty unique, especially when you talk about the assessment and the discovered platform and but these things are, there's not really a lot of us out there in the world that do what I do. Right. Um, there may be a few hundred, which might sound like a lot, but you know, unlike the recruiting world where there's thousands, right. Of yes. Competitors in that space. Right. And so like any hire, you have to train and onboard them and you have to, you know, brain dump and, you know, get them up to speed with you. And, you know, marketing agencies tend to be pretty expensive to work with. And so as a, on a 
bootstrap shoestring budget, paying somebody five or 10,000 or $15,000 a month to only get a fraction of their time and their energy and attention um, is a real big investment. And it's super challenging and to get them on message, helping getting them to understand the product, the service, the ideal customer, um, everything yeah. about marketing yeah. your business, it, you know, ultimately it really, you know, I find it came for me. I, I I've ultimately been my own CMO for the whole time and for better and worse, uh, you know, and over the recent years, you know, we found, we just brought it all in house and, you know, we get 15 X the volume of work done, you know, and, um, yeah. you know, uh, are more focused. Right. Yeah. In interesting. That's an interesting observation. Yeah. Agencies, um, can be a consortium of very smart, creative people. And there's an energy inside yeah. of that company, uh, and a sort of a creative, a creative sort of boiling pot really. Um, but as you say, uh, getting them to be in alignment with the company's understanding values, uh, customers, yeah. customer journey can be quite difficult. Sometimes, uh, they tend to do very well with larger corporate clients where, yeah. you know, there's bigger resources as well. Uh, yeah. which is why I started the unnoticed entrepreneur actually was because yeah. I, I've seen agencies not always work out for the smaller company, but then where do you get the strategy from yeah. that you do need to find the strategy that's not just in Google, right. Or someone else's yeah. blog. Yeah. They, I've always learned from them. I've always taken something away from them. Uh, some of them have had different, you know, positive strengths and, and uh, things that they bring to the table. So I've also taken advantage of, okay, well, if I'm going to spend this amount of money with an agency, like, let me at least internalize, learn from them. So I am you know, taking away something that I can use forever, as opposed to just like, oh, you go do it. And then when they fail, I'm just disappointed and mad and out thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands of dollars. Right. So yeah. I don't know. It's, you know, it's a challenge. It, again, it's a particular challenge for my business because of its uniqueness. Um, you know, I, I have friend, plenty of friends who are who own marketing agencies and they're, you know, they have wonderful case studies and do wonderful things for their clients. But, uh, I see a trend that they're typically hyper focused in a particular sector, like they work with dentists or construction yes. companies, right? So it's easier for them to adopt a new customer because some of the industry, some of the uniqueness of their business is taken out, yeah. or, you know, taken out and they you know, less yeah. to, to assimilate with, right? Yeah, the um, in the McKinsey speak, they call about uh, they call it T shaped consulting. So you have a across the horizontal, you have a an expertise, marketing, for example, or PR. Yeah. And then on the vertical, you have the industry expertise. And it used to yeah. be that you could be you know, fairly horizontal across multiple industries. Yeah. In the last 10, 20 years, just for the reason that you're explaining, clients need to have some domain expertise because of the yeah. language and the people and the media contacts, for example. Yeah. You need to know the industry as well as the have the practice flip in the Flip's size it. too in the size too right you know are you a big national dental brand or are you a small corner shop you know dentist two yeah. you know two different yeah. animals very very different challenges one one thing i will pick you up on fletcher you're one of the first people to have an accessibility button on your website this is completely random i know but i couldn't <laughs> help but notice on the left hand side of your website you have the picture of the of the person with yeah. their arms and legs out straight. Yeah. And you've got the accessibility where I can change, I can look for online dictionary, I can increase the uh the the font size, I can do dyslexia friendly. Yeah. Um as well. Um that's very interesting. Visually pleasing experience. How has this impacted your business? It, or has it not or is it really just a, a, a bit of a gimmick? Well, I I <laughs> There's a lot to unload there. So I don't know what impact it's made, honestly. I wish I did, um, uh, frankly. But, you know, it is important. It was important to us. It's important to me that we are uh, following the best practices. As I mentioned earlier, our number one success driver has been organic search. And this is a best practice in organic search. So, you know, the search engines want to know that you're accommodating to all types of people. Um, also it's a joke, you know, I'm not in HR, but 
uh, often are lumped into the HR bucket and, you know, being sensitive to uh, people with, you know, unique uh, learning abilities or different disabilities or, or uh, cognitive abilities is a really, you know, important topic there. Yeah. We want to be sensitive to that. And, and in fact, we want to, you know, figure out how to be more inclusive. I, I have a somebody with Asperger's on my team. I have somebody with Tourette's on my team. Um, and, you know, I, all of that was frankly by accident, uh, but uh, no intentionality there. Just we yeah. put them through this, the same process we put everybody through. And it turns out they, none of them told me this in the hiring process either. Like, <laughs> yeah, but, know, that, uh, but, but, it's, yeah. but it is interesting though. So um, for anyone that wants to see that at work, you can go to discovered. Yeah ats.com to see on the left hand side the accessibility and also i've been doing screen recording if you want to go to the youtube channel to see that because you're the first person fletcher i've seen that's got that accessibility bar so congratulations to you yeah, now we thanks. must just move on to sort of my penultimate question before we're going to have the the offers that you're kind of going to make um, yeah. a number one tip that you would give as an entrepreneur to my fellow unnoticed entrepreneurs about getting noticed about getting noticed Mm. Um, oh boy. Well, I mean, I, 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 like I said, I, I've committed, I mean, one of our core values is educate first. And so I've just leaned into that and content, uh, all, all the way. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to spoil my favorite book, but, um, <laughs> but it's all about, you know, being brutal transparency. I mean, just being, sharing your knowledge and, uh, you know, going, coming from a place of giving first, was always important to me and still is. And if anything, you know, constantly reminding myself of that. And, uh, you know, that's created a lot of opportunities to be on podcasts like yours or stages, speaking to other entrepreneurs. And um, that's been a, a huge driver for us and revenue. Okay. So give first maybe a, a tip and we're going to get from you your favorite book uh, that you'd like to share as yeah. well. So I'm in love with Marcus Sheridan. <laughs> if you're out there listening, Marcus, <laughs> I want to give you a hug and a kiss. Um, uh, uh, but his book, um, They Ask, You Answer, uh, is everything I hope I want to be when I grow up and I've wanted to be for 11 years. Um, and I've aspired to and done many of the things that he's suggested and uh, will continue to be a student of his. Okay, that's one of Hero's book, also including a case study, I believe, about writing on his website about the best pool types, didn't he? And he had a, that, yeah, a the, pool the, business the, in the Florida. The book is, is a case study of how he almost went bankrupt and and, 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 and is now the largest manufacturer of uh, in-ground uh, pool. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Uh, those, yeah, those swimming synthetic pools, pools, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Based, on a, based on a blog <laughs> post giving people guidance on – yeah. ways to buy a pool so there's a great great story i heard him give a talk um online yeah. about that yeah. yeah fletcher speaking of being online i mustn't keep you any longer if you want to find out more about you and those kind offers that you'd like to make yeah where can they go yeah so discovered ats.com um that's our, our website. Feel free. There's a, in the pricing section, there's a free plan there. You should check it out. Uh, you'll get a free applicant tracking system. Uh, now, some of the cool things about that is you get a free career page that's branded to match your brand. You can embed it on your website. So uh, I think many small businesses haven't quite got there yet or have been longing. Oh, I mean, I wish I had that or don't want to spend the money on the marketing team to do it. Uh, there's a performance management tool, a really simple, effective performance management tool, because uh, that's super important in your workforce planning and hiring and how you do and, and measuring success of hiring. We'll also give you five free disk assessments, or you can try one of our other 30 plus assessments or some of our other 30 plus assessments. And there's a bunch of other tools uh, embedded, interview guides, candidate scorecards, all free um, and access to our AI tools to help accelerate your hiring efforts, all, all part of that free plan. So I uh, just definitely encourage people to check it out, at least dip their toe in the water of starting to hire better. Fletcher Wimbush, you have been discovered. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we've been listening to Fletcher Wimbush in the rather glamorous sounding Surfside, California. And um, I'm just here in Wiltshire. My name's Jim James. Thank you for joining my guest, Fletcher and I to talk about hiring and the importance of it. And I think this, this idea as well that he's come and shared 
from a business point of view is the importance of focus and that you create a brand and a focus around a particular business need. And that's actually liberating, not debilitating. And so that's wonderful. And also finally that to give first is a great long-term strategy. So thank you for letting me give to you another episode of The Unnoticed Entrepreneur. If you've enjoyed it, do please review it on your player and share it with a fellow unnoticed entrepreneur because we don't want anyone to go unnoticed. And until we meet again, I just encourage you to keep on communicating.